Here is my manual pick and place machine for SMT components. It's all put together, it's been tested and it's working. It's working quite nicely. Uh, let's have a quick tour about the machine. Uh, over here is a little toggle switch. This operates the vacuum. Goes to this little vacuum pump here. Which the vacuum then travels up the tube here. Connects to banjo fitting. And the banjo fitting enables the tube to swivel. Or the tube to remain stationary as the needle swivels. Otherwise the tube will get tam tangled around the machine. And here is a little microscope with some light shining out of it. It's actually this um, tube here, so follow that and we go up to a screen at the top which is looking directly at one of our components. We're going to try and pick that component out of this reel strip here and place it on the circuit board with very high precision. So going back here, <coughs> we've got some little push buttons here and each of these push buttons, these four here anyway at least, operate the four axes. And this fifth one here labelled J, that is a reset. And uh, we can put the sliders back to the middle position, press reset and uh, we can start again. We've got lots of travel. And here are our main controller chips. When I first put the project together they got a bit hot but adjusted the code on the Arduino which is hiding behind here. The Arduino Mega is actually underneath there and it doesn't get hot anymore which is really nice. There's no capacitors or diodes in the circuit. Not needed. And there's a few jumpers here. A few jumpers. There's red jumpers there just for connecting the Arduino Mega. And over here that's our voltage supply here. It's on a 12 volt supply at the moment. I think the motors can take a bit more than that. Uh, one thing that's really important is not to try and connect the USB port, USB cable to a computer whilst the 12 volt is connected, just in case there's any faults on the controller board. Otherwise it could destroy the computer. Uh, this is the power supply for the vacuum pump which I've just demonstrated on the toggle switch. So the toggle switch turns on the power supply which turns on the vacuum pump. Vacuum pump picks up the components from the needle with a small vacuum. So we've got Speed control, we've gone through that. Uh, we haven't looked at the sliders. So what we do to operate the machine, you press your little finger, one of the buttons, it's quite easy, and then another finger on the slider. So move that and it moves the whole machine. It's pretty easy to operate. If you run out of travel, get to here, you just press, um, maybe push that back up there and then press J. And then you've got a whole load more travel again. So it never runs out of travel other than what the machine itself can physically supply in terms of the motors and the tracks. So there's a the machine, let's try and pick a component up. So what I do here, I've not really used the machine very much, so I'm not very quick at it, and it's quite difficult to operate the camera at the same time. So what I do is I start off just by eye, just get the needle somewhere above the machine, try and get the needle sort of reasonably close to the actual component by eye, and then we'll move to the screen. So here we are, we can see that the needle's kind of hovering above the component. So just very carefully bring it down on top of the component, might as well get it centered. And then when it's above, whack on the um, vacuum pump. And then that'll pick the component up when I operate the z-axis. Well, it should do. Oh, there it is. <laughs> yes. The 
we've got the component, we've grabbed it, and now we can go back, look at the circuit board again, by eye, and move the component onto one of these pads. Let's get it across here. Run out of travel here, so we just bring this back, press J, and we've reset the travel. So again, just across, get the needle to go down a bit, and across. So, right. I can't really see much what's going on there now, so let's go to the screen. There we are, we've got a much better idea of what's going on. So, obviously, it needs to lower down a bit. And go across. And go up, up, down, 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 touching. That's so that's still twisting it round. And bring that way. And we're right above the pad now. So let's just move to fine control. Put it right on top of the pad. This would normally have solder on it. Obviously, I haven't got it at the moment. So we don't want to smudge the solder by getting it in the wrong place while it's on the pad. Let's flip the pump switch off. Right, and lastly, just very carefully bring the nozzle back up again. There it is. Back up. We've got really good control here. You can move it really nice and easily. That's on course control, so let's put a fine control. Loads of control on it, you can do really small adjustments with this. So, there we have it a manual pick and place machine. I guess it could be adapted to be fully automatic, but it's not really what I want. I'm just interested in making one off prototypes. I don't even have to do it that quickly, really. I just don't want to smudge the solder on these um, circuit boards. So once the solder's been put in place with the stencils, it's, it's like um, screen printing. You don't want to be moving, smudging components around and messing it up, especially if you've got a board with loads of components and then you've got to restart the whole thing because you've made a mess on a critical component. I don't want to do that, I'd rather take my time put each individual component down really accurately and get it all absolutely perfect and then uh, go in the oven and uh, you've got a perfectly produced one-off prototyping circuit board you know, if you have got shaky hands or bad eyesight then this enables you to do SMT electronics and components are getting smaller and smaller as time goes on so yeah it's a good thing to be able to do and the best components will inevitably be SMT all the um, these old chips here are still producing them for some reason but I mean, these, are, these are dinosaurs not really going to be seeing so many of these in the future and yeah those are really easy to solder you don't need a machine like this but yeah, the, the equivalent would be at least one twentieth of the size in SMT. There we go. Thank you for watching. Catch you later.